So um, Karen Adams is one of our master gardeners, and we're just pleased that she could do that. So ask that everybody go ahead and mute, if you would. Um, if you have questions, uh, um, you can go ahead and put it in the chat, and, uh, and we'll just move along. So Karen, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. See if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, for coming today to this little workshop. Uh, I have a few slides just to kind of talk a little bit about making paper and, um, you know, re basically remaking paper, which is what we're doing here. Uh, I was talking to my, my aunt when I was preparing for today's talk, and she reminded me that actually what we're doing is not making paper itself because we're recycling that paper. Um, so I just being the scientist I am, I like to be specific. Um, we are we are hopefully though in the end of this project going to have some good sheets of paper that we can uh, turn into cards and send off and decorate or however we want. Uh, if you have seeds to add, it kind of adds a neat little dimension that the people who receive the cards can then plant them. Um, and hopefully get some of those seeds to sprout and grow for them a little a little pot of flowers or something. Can you guys see the slides at this point? We can. Great. Um, so <laughs> I was so so interested in seeing people's faces that I forgot to put my trivia questions up. <laughs> Normally I uh, have a couple of questions here and I figure it's worth going through. Um, the first modern paper was made in China, uh, and a single pine tree can give you 80,000 sheets of paper. So a lot of paper can be made from one pine tree. I did a little math, though, and that came back down to being about 13 boxes of paper or 161 reams. So it's a lot, and then it got to 13 boxes, and it, I was trying to picture a big tree with 13 boxes sitting next to it. Uh, and it gave me a sense of scale. Uh, how many tra trees are saved by recycling a ton of paper? Well, you can save 17 trees from recycling just one ton of paper. And we'll talk a little bit about recycling in a little bit because uh, we here in the U.S. do a surprisingly good job at recycling our paper, and it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, before... We had paper. Humans did a lot of, of writing and uh, drawing and communicating uh, what we see and think on other materials like leather or silk. Uh, we used stone and wood and clay. So we, we have been writing on materials for a long time and using other materials to portray what we see in our mind's eye. And then around the second century, a Chinese inventor developed the first known process of modern paper, paper making, where they used mulberry and um, scraps from hemp and old rags, and they beat it together into a nice pulp and uh, turned it into paper sheets. And over the centuries, of course, this process has been improved and improved and improved so that we've gone from this rough paper material uh, to what we use now in our printers, which is very fine, smooth, very white paper. <laughs> um, this technology through, through the time had been passed from China to Arabia and into Europe and, and just all around the world, really. Today, um, the U.S. and China are the, the big paper producers in the world, and we have switched over from using... Uh, leaves and kind of herbaceous plant material to wood. So sometime in the, uh, I think, early 1800s, we mechanized the process of making paper and were able to start mass producing it. Um, and when we start mass producing anything, we have a little bit of an environmental impact depending on what we're doing. So uh, it was recognized early on that recycling paper, actually even before mechanization, people were recycling paper because you can reuse the, the material several times, um, five to seven times I think is the number that I've seen put out there. You can recycle the same paper five to seven times. 
um, before it starts to break down and not do so hot. Uh, as I mentioned, it was originally um, made with herbaceous plants and recycled rags and cloth. And then they started to, to uh, recycle linen and incorporate that recycled fabric into the first paper. And um, they would just gather old rags to help put into the paper. And in 1896 in New York City, the first major recycling center was started. So as I mentioned at the start, we do a really good job of recycling our paper here in the U.S. We recycle about 80% of the paper that's used um, into new paper products. And uh, that's notable. We use a lot of paper. And... Um, you know, I can only imagine that a large proportion of the 20% remaining is in a more permanent format like books or, you know, standing documents that don't go into the trash or into being recycled. It goes, they go into a library or some kind of archive. So we aren't putting a lot of paper into our waste stream relative to what we're producing. Recycling is uh, something that saves a lot of money. It saves, um, saves a good number of trees. You can recycle it a number of times, and it keeps it out of the landfill, so it saves space for the other stuff that we need to put there. And um, I was listening to an interesting podcast the other day about recycling in general, and they were pointing out that Recycling paper reduces greenhouse gases in a couple of ways. First of all, it doesn't require the transportation and mechanization that you need to go out and harvest the trees in the first place. But also, just by leaving the trees standing, a grown, you know, fully mature standing tree is able to incorporate a lot more carbon into its tissues than the tiny seedlings we replace them with. So it does take a long time to generate that forest uh, and um, you get more, I guess, bang for the buck, sort, so to speak, if you leave a, a tree standing than if you cut it down and replant a new one, for, at least for the, the near term. So recycling has been a really important uh, thing for us to have done. And what we're doing, so the other thing that they pointed out was that you know, if you think about recycling, paper and aluminum are really the only things that we actually recycle. We turn it from a piece of paper or a can back into another piece of paper or another can. If you think about plastic recycling, really that's downcycling where you take a plastic bottle. The next time you recycle it, you can't make another plastic bottle out of that plastic. But you can make, um, you know, a coat or turf for ball fields or any, you know, a number of other of other products. So it's it's slightly different. Um, and we today are going to be making paper that we can plant, hopefully, uh, with shreds of paper that already exists. So we are recycling our paper in the truest sense of the word. Um, basically, what you have to have to do to make to make new paper out of old paper is either wood or recycled paper. Cloth fibers um, are helpful. You can use bleach or inks if you want. I will talk a little bit about coloring paper today and uh, from my experience <laughs> with homemade paper making, there's clearly something I'm missing. Um, you need sizing agents, and we'll talk about why and what those are, and, um, you know, fillers or uh, I guess the fillers are also other sizing agents um, or other items that help to increase the strength of the paper. And any paper making from, you know, the first time they did it in China to today goes through the same basic operations where you have to soak the material that you're going to use. Uh, you suspend it. Uh, well, you soak it and you shred it. You really beat it into a nice pulp. And then you suspend that pulp in water and you filter that water through a screen so it catches the fibers that are in the water. And then you drain it and press it and dry it. Um, and you can put some finishing touches on it that, that change it and allow it to hold different paints or inks or look in, uh, its appearance will change in the finishing process depending on what we're doing. So this is actually what we're going to do today. If you have um, 
if you picked up the, the paper kits and you are following along today, um, hopefully you were able to get that shredded paper into the water last night and just let it soak. Generally, we use about two cups of uh, paper shreds, really packed cups, to about four cups of water is the ratio that I use just for kind of this um, small-scale kind of craft paper making. <clears throat> I have just a couple of side, slides to talk about, I guess, the science of, of paper and the science of making paper and what allows it to happen. So wood is made up of cellulose fibers, as you may or may not know, and those cellulose fibers are linear in structure, and they're held together with lignin, which is basically this um, sugary, gluey, sticky material that uh, makes the main body of the wood, um, or is part of the main body of the wood together with the cellulose. So when you take that wood and you mash it into a pulp with water, the fibers separate and the lignin somewhat dissolves into that water. And when you bring it back onto the screen and press it out and let it dry, the lignin rebonds those fibers together into a sheet rather than into a log. So that's the super basic uh, foundation of making paper. The longer the fibers, the stronger your paper will be. Um, and so you don't, when you're recycling paper, it's really important to make sure that you don't stick it in the blender for too long. You want to keep those fibers as long as possible because um, when they get chopped up, the paper starts to, to rip and break and be really fragile. I mentioned sizing. Um, sizing is kind of like my, my own personal advanced <laughs> uh, next step in paper making. I've, I've I've been making paper for fun for a few years, kind of off and on. I learned to do it when I was in school, and, you know, periodically I would I would just decide that it was time to make some paper to send cards or little letters or for whatever purpose. Um, but I was originally just doing the, the paper pulp, pressing it out, maybe mixing in a few decorate, decorative pieces. Um, but the sizing is really important if you're going to try and... Uh, use inks or paints. Sizing changes the absorption of the paper and I think this this figure, this picture, really helps put it in your mind what sizing does. So you can see that the paper towel, and you've probably seen this on your kitchen counter, you know, your paper towel absorbs that water and it spreads out across the fibers. So if you wanted to write a letter, your letter is going to be really fuzzy. It's not going to be very clear. The lines don't hold very well. They spread. So if you add sizing, it helps to keep those lines tight. It helps to keep, it helps reduce the amount of water that's absorbed from the ink and kind of keep it there on the surface so you can see it where you put it. And sizing is added to paper in two phases of the process, depending on what you're going to use the paper for. Um, we are are going to add some starch, some cornstarch, and you should have a little container with about two tablespoons of cornstarch for our two cups of paper and four cups of water today. And um, when you add it in on that end, it helps to strengthen the paper. It gives a little more, uh, a little something into that mix to help the lignin and help make sure that you have good, strong bonds between the fibers. <clears throat> and then you can add uh, sizing on the dry end, which is after your paper dries, especially if you're going to paint on that paper, um, you may choose to use uh, sizing on the dry end, and that's what the packet of gelatin is for. Um, I will talk about that a little bit as we're actually going through and doing this, this exercise. But starch has always been and continues to be one of the primary size, sizing agents. And the starch we're using today is cornstarch. So once we've got the paper sheets and we have these nice wet papers, um, one of the pitfalls that you come into when you first start making paper is that you find your paper wrinkles. <laughs> um, so uh, when you are drying the paper, there's uh, several different approaches you can take. Now, I show a picture of ironing this paper, and I will 
you know, show you how that helps with the drawing process. But I want to make sure that everyone hears that for the paper that we make with seeds in it, we will not use an iron. <laughs> um, we we will want to use a different process. We'll want to press it and let it. It's going to take longer to dry, but if you use an iron, it's typically too hot to uh, let those seeds survive. So no ironing on the seed paper. Uh, you can line dry it if you're okay with it wrinkling up a bit, or you can press it in a plant press or between some heavy books with some felt and let it dry that way, and that'll make you a nice flat sheet. So we'll talk about that today as we do the demonstration as well. Um, I have this slide. It, I think this is the one that I printed out for the kits, and um, you'll probably be able to get copies of these, I'm assuming. Um, if you can't, just let me know uh, or talk to Gary or Alice or Marilee, and they can get in touch with me, and I can send this particular slide out. It's a really good kind of quick guide that just goes through the steps of, of making your paper. Um, so that will be available if you need it. Uh, these references also are super helpful online. Uh, Paper Slurry is a super great website um, for hand making paper, and they they have a lot of tips, and they do they have um, a good little kind of cheat sheet, step by step thing that you can keep. And if you're going to do this more often, um, Arnold Grummer has been offering paper making classes for quite some time and if you go to his YouTube page you can see that they, the videos look like they might be recordings from way back. Um, but he is also really good to follow along with and has some good insight. He's been making paper for, or had been making paper for a while. Um, so there's three or four other references here and again we can make these available to you if you'd like to have a copy of those. But in the interest of time, I'm going to switch now and uh, get into it. Um, stop broadcasting the screen. Great. <laughs> okay, before I start um, on the demonstration, does anyone have any questions that I should field? Or does it look good? Anything in the Q&A box? Nothing there. One of the, the things that I pass on to people, if you're seeing everybody on your screen, if you go up into the right-hand corner, it'll say view. You can hit that so you only see the speaker, which is going to make the demonstration a lot easier for you. So Yeah, you'll be able choice, to see it. You get in small box, it's really hard to see things. So go for speaker view. Um, put Karen on the, the whole screen and because uh, you don't need the rest of us anyway. Um, Kitty, did you have a question? Um, I know this is pretty basic paper making, but when, you, when you're when you doing add-ins, like if there was a picture with the leaves and stuff in there, do you want to make sure everything that you add in is dry or can it be a healthy leaf or do you, do you know my question? Yes. Um, I have used fresh flower petals, and depending on um, the color, the pigment that's in those flower petals, it will hold the color or not uh, when it dries. So, you know, it, it, if, like, for example, roses, I have some lovely pink roses, but when they dry, they just turn into kind of this beige, papery color anyway. So if you know what the dried format of that is what it looks like, then you'll have an idea of what it will look like in your paper. But you can absolutely use fresh materials. Um, and I'm going to add in the seeds and a few flower petals today. Uh, oranges tend to dry really lovely, like calendula, for example, or marigold. Um, and that's what I've got for my seeds today. Uh, and I'm not super smooth in that process. You'll see I, it's, it's kind of a, a struggle. It works a lot better for me if I have an extra set of hands. Um, but we'll give it a good shot today. But yeah, you should be able to use, um, use fresh materials. It should be all right. And it will dry with the paper. As the paper dries, it'll dry out and it'll change the appearance over time. All right, Thank so you. I'm going to flip my screen. Great. 
Okay. Let's make sure I've got us in the screen here. Give me just one quick sec. Great. So, for those of you who got a kit, you probably got something that looks roughly like this, where you have your mold and decal, or your screen and frame. I'm not, uh, I don't know, I've always referred to it as a street screen and frame, but the technical term for it is a mold and decal. And this was super easy to make. Um, this one and the ones in the kits are basically pay, uh, picture frames, as you can see. And on one of the picture frames, you take a window screen, and I've added to ours some hardware cloth behind it just to give it some extra strength and to keep the screen from stretching. And then I like to tape it down. It's stapled to the frame underneath, but I like to tape it down um, just to keep all the edges, the sharp edges of the hardware cloth um, safe and to keep the screen from, you know, the, the rough edges from unraveling. And then you have your frame, and you'll see on the kits that I have included um, a little bit of window um, like weather stripping, and that's going to make your frame. So when you, when you pull this up, it's the all of the pulp could either run off the edges of this, and you'll have something that looks like you could do paper with it. But this really helps to contain it and to make it shape. And I've seen where people have used, like, cookie cutters or whatever to help them get a shape other than a square, um, but I have not mastered that technique. Um, I, but that, that is to say that there's so much fun stuff to do with this that you can explore after you get this basic process done. So I totally encourage everyone to just play with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so we have our screen and our frame. We have our cornstarch. <clears throat> As I said, I'll talk about sizing um, on the dry end a little bit later, but you might, you'll have a packet of gelatin you can set aside. And then you've got um, a nice big bag of paper. And um, you try and keep the pieces pretty short. Uh, an inch or two really is all it needs. You can cut it with scissors. It doesn't have to be strips like this, but the paper pieces do work better when they're smaller. They're just easier to, to chop up. And I like the way the paper looks when I have just a little bit of, this has some paper bag in it, so a little bit of brown pieces. Um, just a few colors just to make the paper have a little bit more character. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, hopefully last night you had a chance to Put your paper in some nice hot water and let it sit overnight. So I've got mine all ready to go. Um, you can use a mixer. I have kind of a dedicated blender for all of my various stuff. I have two young kids and we do a lot of different craft stuff. And um, if you're only making paper once, I have used my food blender. <laughs> It's not ideal, and definitely you'll want to clean it really well. But um, you can. I've seen that people have had good success with making paper using a blender, like a hand mixer. Um, so that might be another option. I haven't tried that way. So if you have your paper ready to go, you can pour the water and the paper shreds into your blender. And then you're going to blend this for just, um, you know, a minute or two. I'm not sure how much noise is going to come over this. Just a heads up if you need to turn the volume down for a quick second. Um, I'm not going to blend it on screen, but I will bring the blender back to show you the consistency before we add it to our water. So, um, as always, make sure your lid's on nice and tight. I don't think it matters which setting on your blender you use. Um, it kind of just depends on what, uh, how impatient you are, I guess. So one moment, let's see. Oh, 
Hopefully that wasn't too terribly loud. <clears throat> so you can see now we kind of have something that looks like oatmeal. Um, and <laughs> kind of has the feel of like sopping wet paper. <laughs> um, and this is what we're going to, to basically start with for our uh, mix. And so you also in your kits got a nice big roasting pan. And again, if you start to do this, if this is, becomes more of a serious hobby, you can find other basins. But you basically want something that's going to hold three or four inches of water um, and something that's durable that you can use over again. I've used foil uh, pans quite a bit uh, for, you know, for a long time. They're pretty, if you don't have people stepping on them and stuff, they'll last a long time. So we have our water here. You might be, um, it might be helpful for you to grab a spoon or something to help kind of just stir it. And all you need to do from here is just pour your slurry in. And I definitely have some varieties. It looks like I've got, like I've got a few longer pieces. It, it's all going to be just about how you want this paper to look. The longer pieces will show up, but that could be a really good thing. It could make some really nice uh, kind of random additions in there. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you have a few towels or you may have, um, if you have a, a big sponge, we're going to use these towels to help get the moisture out of our uh, paper sheets. Oh, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> you can also um, add this cornstarch into your mixture. Ideally, you add this into the blender because it just helps to blend it better. Um, and you don't get the clumpy thing that you get with gravy. But if all else fails, especially in a nice deep pan like this, you can um, just mix it in and incorporate it. So typically, you'll want to include the starch into your blender. I got a little ahead of myself there. So, um, I've tried a few times to add color to my paper, and I have not mastered that yet. Um, I've tried to add the color into the paper at this stage, where um, I've tried to add it into the stage at the blender, and I think I must be using the wrong kind of dye. So, like, clearly a water-soluble dye isn't ideal. Um, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of just a basic sheet first, and then we'll talk about adding in the seeds. But from here, you're going to make sure that your frame is on top of your, your screen. You're going to hold them together, kind of level them out so they're nice and even. And then when you dip in, you're going to dip at an angle and scoop up so that you can grab paper, um, all those paper fibers. So um, if you've got your stuff together, you're just going to dip it through in here and pull it up. And you can kind of see, hopefully, that you're starting to get that paper come in here. And you can see where I've got some of these nice long pieces of brown. I like that look personally, so it doesn't bother me much. But if you decide that the long pieces are going to be a problem for you, before you pour it into the pan, you can always hit it with the blender another time or two. So once you've let all the water kind of shake off the bottom, as much as you think you've got patience for, mine's pretty much stopped all but dripping now. I'm just going to move it and put it on top of a, of a folded towel. And then you can take your sponge or another towel, and you're just going to, uh, well, first you're going to give it a good press here. And then take your frame off and set it aside and then really press.
And then I like to use felt to, to couch my, or couch my uh, paper sheets, but you just want to find something that's going to hold that paper sheet while it's wet until you're ready for the next stage. And you can kind of see here that my paper sheet is pulling away already. And it should be strong enough to just pull it right off and set it here. And that's your first sheet of paper, all set. You can press out some more water. I tend to let them sit fairly wet to start because um, as you go and your towels get more and more wet, the paper will start to stick to the towel rather than where you're trying to make it go, and that's just one extra step that's more difficult. So this is our very first sheet that we've pulled um, from our paper. So if you're going to do some seat additions, like I said, I've um, gathered some calendula seeds and a few petals. You can see that bright orange color is in there. So there's a few ways to do this. Um, and I've kind of learned the hard way <laughs> about that. Um, if you, I'm going to show you really quick what this looks like if you do it um, in a couple of different ways that I've, that I've tried and figured it would. You want to give your water a nice stir, get everything back in suspension. And you're going to dip in and let it drain. And the first time I started trying to do this, I tried to press them on the top. And then, you know, how do you get them to stick? How do the seeds not just fall off? Well, part of it is because you've got the starch and the lignin from the paper that helps to glue it on top. So they don't necessarily fall right off, but if you're going to write on this and fold it up and ship it to someone in a, in a little card, they may not do so great. So you kind of need another layer of paper. My initial thought was, okay, well, I'm just going to like put the seeds on top here and then I'll just redip it. Um, and typically that causes the paper underneath the paper sheet to kind of float up and get wrinkly. Um, <laughs> of course, this time it didn't happen that way. Um, so that is one, one way to do it is to, to try and stick it on there and really carefully grab another, another layer on top. Um, Another way to do it would be to take a, a cup or your spoon and put your seeds in here and then just put more water on the top or more of the paper slurry on top to make sure your seeds get covered. So you can see also if you don't like the way a sheet is going, it's super easy to just put it back in the water and start over. So if you're going to do add-ins, and you can do, um, you know, I've, I've used colorful string that you can kind of layer in there however you want. You have lots of time. This is not something you have to hurry to do. You can arrange your add-ins however you like. Um, so if you have your seeds, you can open them up, and you're going to just pull your paper out. Again, let it drain just as we did the first time. While it's draining, you can hold it underneath and take your seeds. Oh, it's a little heavy-handed. And these nice long seeds tend to kind of embed themselves a little bit, which is great. Kind of press them in place. And I'm nervous. I've, I've just had really bad luck with trying to do a second dip. Um, so you can add a second layer 
kind of slowly, slowly over the top. If you get wrinkles, you can kind of shake them around, shake them out. And then you'll bring your towels back. Press everything together and take your frame off. And then get another nice, good press out of it. And again, this one's ready to come right off for me. So this is the back. It's just that nice mottled uh, look with the brown and white paper. And then this is with my seeds and my flower petals in it. This one's a little bit loose, but it looks like a good number of them are really embedded under a nice layer, and they should stick just fine. So, now I'm going to move on from the interest of time to talk about drying process. Um, so if you are, after you've got your sheets and you've got them on the felts, um, you can take them and layer more felts on top. And then put these layered, you know, I can get two of this kind of four by six size of paper on each of these sheets and just make like a stack of them. And then if you have a plant press, then you can take them and put them in, in your plant press just like you would a plant. Um, you can put them in between some layers of cardboard and put them in between the, the main boards of the plant press, or you can put them under heavy books, wherever you have space for them. Um, if you just leave them out, You're going to get some pretty wavy looking sheets. These are ones that I left out overnight. I made a set over the weekend so that I could kind of have some examples to show. And you can see that these aren't super even. Um, but they're pretty sturdy. And these can be fixed. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, if you press them, you get some nice flat sheets of paper. And these, even these aren't super, you know, this one's got a little bit of a turn to it. Um, and I showed the iron being used, and that's a really good method, like I said, if you're not doing, um, if you're not doing seeds in your paper, if you're just doing straight paper or decorated other, in other ways and you don't need something living to come out of it. Um, and that's a pretty easy process. Although it turns out that my iron didn't turn on for some reason. But basically all you need is a, some kind of a dish cl dishcloth or a uh, flour sack or something like that. And you can take your uh, wrinkly bit of paper and put it in between these layers and just iron over the top of that. And that will get you a nice flat piece of paper like this. This is one that I kind of alternately I ironed it while it was wet to get a lot of moisture. And then I hung it to dry. This is my very fancy dryer. I have some clothespins attached to a standard hanger so I can hang four or five sheets up at a time around the house. Um, and so with those, I ironed them first, I let them finish drying on the hanger, and then I ironed them again. And it gives you a nice flat sheet. Um, the other part that we have is a discussion about the sizing. And um, you can see that I have, this is just paper with starch. 
um, as we mixed it, as we made it. So I didn't add any dry end sizing here. This is what I what we just did now. And my pen is holding its line. The starch really helps. If you don't add a starch to your paper, especially if you're using something like a Sharpie or a marker, um, probably paints as well, it tends to kind of spread out and bleed like we saw in the paper towel example. But with just starch, it, it makes a pretty nice finish and you can write on it pretty well. If you are going to use paints, I suspect that you will need to make uh, gelatin paper sizing. You can buy products in a spray can at the art store, or you can get a packet of Knox gelatin and add it to about four cups of water. Um, and I would heat the water first to uh, nearly boiling. You just need to dissolve the, the gelatin. You don't need to make it gel. Um, and I store mine in a, in a bottle, and it, it'll keep for a few weeks before you, it's probably best to throw it out. This is just gelatin. Now, again, if you're doing a seed paper, I'm not sure of the effects of putting a gelatin sizing on it. So that's um, an option for other types of paper, I would think. You could certainly play with it um, and see how it goes. Plant your own paper. Um, when you get ready to plant your seed papers, all you really have to do is soak the seed in water and put it down in a tray um, with some potting soil or some seed starting mix to get it going. And um, that should help you as you get those, those plants started. And uh, that should get those plants started and going. And I have put them, I just put them, I soak them in water and get the paper nice and wet put them straight down on top. Sometimes I, I put a little dusting of soil over the top, but just a dusting because the paper itself holds the water and has the material and the structure needed to just get those seeds started. And the roots will do the rest of the work. They'll, they'll find their way down into that soil or um, potting medium, whatever you choose to use. So um, yeah, it's a really fun project. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on trying to make my paper into different colors. Food coloring doesn't work, <laughs> um, at least not the way I've tried to do it. There, I don't know if maybe you can apply it after you've got the paper on your screen. I have a lot of playing to do with trying to make colored paper. Uh, I have tried to use like wrapping paper that already has the color and that doesn't seem, those must be water soluble colors as well because that seems to run. So I'm still exploring the color world. Uh, but the flower petals, the add-ins, those things help uh, make your paper unique and lovely. So is there any questions about what we've done or what you might do in the future? Alice did post a handout um, in the chat box. So if you'd like to copy that, and address and then you'd be able to connect to that. Uh, it's there. Any questions, please feel free to, to ask. Questions are my favorite. <laughs> sure, Roman. I'm not sure if I can see everyone also, but I can definitely see, I think I see a hand up for Roman. Yes. Uh, we're not here. Them, I soak them in water and get it, the paper nice and wet, put them straight down on top. Sometimes, I don't know if maybe you can apply it. Uh, but the flower petals, the add-ins, those things help uh, make your paper unique and lovely. So is there any questions?